All righty. Hello, everyone. Uh, if you are new to me, I know some of you are friends, close colleagues. I am Rita and Perez. I have been in the travel industry. We'll just go on to that slide since 2010. And I decided in 2020, I needed to make a pivot. So I come from the theme park industry, as well as having my own uh, travel business. And I was like, I need to do something different. I cannot be in the theme park industry for any longer, especially with a lot of changes that were happening within the world. So I went ahead and I started my second business called Take the Helm, which helps different businesses and brands with their marketing efforts. And as you can also tell, I'm a huge travel industry champion. So I put on different events like the Travel Tech Audio Summit, and later in the fall, you'll also hear about a big event that's happening called Prep for Wave Week to really get you set up for wave season in the new year. Uh, I, For those of you who weren't here when I started, I am going to make an invitation at the end. I do like to be fully transparent about that. Uh, so here's just a little reminder that I will be making an invitation to join me at a super awesome event at the end of the month. Uh, this is also a reminder, I like to talk, <laughs> so there's going to be a lot of information that's going to be covered. Feel free to take any screenshots, any photos of any of the slides, because uh, I really want to get as much information out to you, but then also to be able to answer some of your questions. So as any questions pop up, please feel free to add them in the chat, and I'll just answer them at the end when we are through. Even though there is a lot of information, there are key things that I want you to remember. Your business is individual and unique. And so what may work for somebody may not also work for your business because you have a different business model, you serve different people, you're in a different region of the world. There's all these different factors. So keep that in mind also. Like there's no one size fits all for everyone. Uh, you also don't need all the things. I'm going to be talking about a lot of different things here, a lot of different marketing tech to help you with your travel business. Start with the free and then upgrade as you need or as your business grows or as you're starting to experience different pain points within your business. And then, of course, hire or pay where needed. There's only so far where free tech or free assistance will go to help you. So what's the purpose of marketing? And you, I kind of like set this up in the sense of the marketing funnel. So where a lot of people are going to find you is in that gain visibility area. Gain visibility means people that need to know about your business, know what you do. They need to know who you are and that you even exist. They cannot do business if they don't know those things. Then you need to be able to create relationships. People have to, I've talked about this on the podcast, if you've listened, the no like trust factor People cannot or won't be willing to give you money for their trips unless there's some sort of relationship or there's some sort of clout behind you. And that's the, that's the segment of marketing that we'll talk about in that second section. Then we'll talk about converting clients because that's what we all want. That's what generates revenue for us is, is if we are converting the clients. And then maintaining the relationships because it just doesn't end when people have already paid us to book their travel and all, we need to maintain that because one, we want their repeat business and two, we want referral business as well, because that means there's less to do here in the gain visibility section. Now, some of the things that have to do with maintaining relationships are very similar to create relationships. You're also going to see when we talk about the different tech, I will talk about the same tech in different areas because there's a lot of cross utilization that you can see as well. So what is the purpose of technology? It really is to save you time and money. Those are, those are the tough things when I think of technology. They do that by helping you stay organized. They do that with different automations that run in the background. Like for this webinar, you all had signed up. I had already created emails to go ahead and automatically send out to you. I didn't have to physically push that out uh, uh, now. They were already set up. So there's the technology that you can set up to like work for you 
in the future. It also helps to improve your processes through workflows. And we talk, I'll talk a little bit about sequence at the end, but you did hear about sequence in the Travel Tech Audio Summit too. It saves you money in the sense that it keeps you less tied down. So because you're able to employ technology to work for you, that's less time that you need to be tied down to something. You can focus on the more creative part, which is putting the itineraries together and sending your clients on these amazing trips. It also helps you to wait on hiring out work. I think one of the common themes that I hear a lot, and I'm a huge proponent of hiring work because I'm one of those people that you would hire with any assistance, but uh, I also know that technology can help save you the time to do that. Uh, and one of the things that I have been noticing is a lot of people just want to hire work right off the bat, but you may not need to hire work just yet. There may be a technological solution to help you out. So when we're talking about technology and your marketing strategy, there's, I feel four key ways, and these are the four key ways is that obviously it's going to improve your efficiency and productivity. The more that you can save time, work faster, work smarter, the more you're able to sell more travel to your clients. It improves your customer service, which again, gives them a really great customer experience, which keeps them coming back and also keeps them being a raving fan to you and your business. It helps you make informed decision. If you are using technology, technology typically allows you to have some sort of data, some sort of analytics. You're able to analyze what's going on in your business and make smarter decisions. Like, can I hire somebody for my business at this point? If I'm hiring, what exactly do I need to hire them for? Because these are the major buckets that need help within my business. It also gives you a competitive advantage. I know there's been a lot of talk recently about CRMs and the multiple CRM and itinerary building platforms. And that does really give you an edge using these technologies that can streamline your processes over the advisor who is still using paper and pen processes. I have been there guilty of that, but have been using technology, I believe since 2018. I think that's when I first started using TravelJoy. All right, so those four buckets, I like to call them the meet, connect, convert method, MCC method. And then we also have our reconnect, which is maintaining the relationships. So we're gonna go over first gaining visibility. This is the meet part. Where are you meeting your clients? I think this is the one that's overlooked because you hear a lot about emails and social media, which is great. You can kind of meet people through social media, but really if clients are your problem, if you don't have enough clients to sustain what your revenue goals are, this is where you need to be focusing on is the gain visibility area. And you can do that through networking. You can do that through other people's platforms. You can do that through collaborations, events, and SEO. SEO is search engine optimization. There are, I'm sure, other ways, but these are the five ones that I wanted to focus on here right now. So gaining visibility through networking. Where can you find networking events? And please comment below where you may have found some networking events. I will say Google is my trusty sidekick in finding networking events local to me. I had decided back at the end of 2019 that I, in 2020, I was going to get out in my local community and I was going to make these relationships with all these different business owners so that I could promote my niche, which is cruise ship retreats. And so I attended one event. It was a local NABO event. NABO stands for the National Association of Women Business Owners. And thankfully, that one event garnered so much access to me because shortly thereafter, we all know what happened. But I type into Google networking events, women networking events. If there's something like um, a parameter that's specific to you, so I am Hispanic, so I could like look for Hispanic networking events. I could also try and see what other... I don't want to say qualifiers, but what commonalities I have with other people. So I have an autoimmune disease. Are there any autoimmune events that are local to me? Maybe you're a parent. Maybe you're a retiree. Maybe you have a certain craft that you're interested in. 
all these types of things can help you have commonalities. It's not just networking that you're building business, but you're really starting to build relationships so that maybe you're not immediately asking for the sale, but that sale can happen later along the way. Uh, Eventbrite and Meetup. Some of you may have found the Travel Tech Audio Summit through Eventbrite. This is one that is not so often used. And I will be very upfront to say that I haven't used Eventbrite very often, but I'm finding that it has really great search engine optimization. So on top of all the other things that you can do, hosting events that you're having or going to Eventbrite to see what kind of networking events is a really great resource for you to have. Similarly is Meetup. LinkedIn. I love LinkedIn for networking because LinkedIn is a technically a social media platform, but it has more of a professional background to it. And I say that because, so you know, Facebook and social media are the most popular social medias. You typically only see people's stuff in your feed that you follow or are connected to. Sometimes the algorithms will go ahead and say like, hey, you might like this too. In LinkedIn, it is purposely built like that. So if I have a connection that comments on somebody else's post, LinkedIn will let me know. And if I find it valuable, I can one, comment on that post and increase my visibility, or two, it just garners more visibility just in general to somebody who I would have never met before. And that's what I like about LinkedIn is that it's like a super connector. So if you're needing a little bit of assistance on LinkedIn, I do have some resources, but post week this year, I did do a presentation on LinkedIn for client attraction. So if you go to the host agency reviews, YouTube channel, there is a link there. I'm on, I'm on Monday afternoon and you can see my presentation on that there for free. Uh, zoom is another way we are on zoom that can help increase your visibility. Are you hosting any webinars or events? Or are you attending Zoom networking? I have been attending lots of different Zoom networking events because of my connections on LinkedIn. So you can see how like the tech is now starting to get woven a little bit. If you're doing in-person networking, obviously business cards are going to be useful to you. There are now these techie options. There's the dot cards, which I've heard they're kind of, it almost looks like one of those, like the Apple air tags. They're really, this is not one of those. This is a, a, this is a little lip sample, but it's as big as this. And you can stick it to like the back of your phone. And I think with Bluetooth technology, it can upload your information to somebody else's phone. So there's all sorts of things that we don't have to be like tied down to business cards. You can automatically get all their information downloaded. There's also something called Hi Hello. So if you're looking for some sort of email signature, the Hi Hello is a really great resource. But on top of that, you can get a QR code with your information from Hi Hello. So maybe it's like you're adding like your QR code to a phone cover or whatnot that you can add and someone can just easily scan it to get your information as well to stay connected. Because the point of gaining visibility isn't just to be like, hi, so-and-so, it's nice to meet you at this event. How are you going to further that relationship? And that's in the next section that we're going to talk about those tech. But you need to meet people so that they know about you, but then keep the relationship going if you want it to, because there's sometimes people we don't want to stay with relationships in our business. And then last but not least, Calendly is also a source in the sense of when you are meeting these people and you want to connect offline through like a virtual coffee chat, Calendly helps you connect the things together. And Calendly is a calendar schedule. There's also Acuity is another one, but I personally love Calendly, again, to get the relationship from meeting in person to going somewhere else. Also, if you were hosting virtual networking, and you wanted people to get on your calendar for virtual networking with yourself and maybe another business owner and them, Calendly is a way to conduct virtual networking sessions as well. All right, other people's platforms. And so I think the best example of this is the Travel Tech Audio Summit. 
there were eight different tech companies that you may have known, may not have known, or may not have known that much. The audio summit gave them visibility by being on this other platform, AKA the audio summit. So how can you also get on somebody else's platform? And LinkedIn is a great way because you're already making connections. You can make the ask as a post on LinkedIn, like, Hey, I'm a travel advisor. I specialize in Italy tours for widows or widowers. I would love to be connected to anyone who might have interest in this. And you may get some response from travel industry. You may get some response from some of your other connections, but you're putting yourself out there that these are the people that you'd like to be connected to giving you visibility and whoever comments on that, they've now opened their network to your post as well. You may have heard of something called Hero, help a reporter out. It's something that you can sign up for. I believe it's still free. And this is getting you visibility on different media platforms. So if you wanted to like be in any sort of news article, it's usually a place where reporters are saying like, I have this article that I've been commissioned to write and I need sources of information to add. And they will use you as a source. They will use you as a quote, again, uplifting you, your visibility, but also giving you some of that trust factor. You can list in on your website or wherever you have some of your information that you're, that you have been featured or as featured in XX travel news or whatever it may be, or CNN or ABC or all the Forbes, uh, all the major news networks. Facebook groups specializing in collaborations. And this is where I, I go back to thinking about your commonalities. What is it that makes you uniquely you? Are you a mother? Are you anti no kids? Uh, do you have an autoimmune disease? Do you love books? Um, are you an author? Those types of groups, see where you can find some sort of collaboration opportunity. I had attended, I think back in 2021, I had attended a virtual summit about a special diet for people who suffer from autoimmune disease like myself and inflammation. I contacted the person that set up that summit and reached out to her and said, I know that this is something people like us have really difficulty in is finding really great anti-inflammatory food and diets. Would you be interested in speaking on some sort of partnership where we could help fellow autoimmune patients travel around the world without having to worry about food? And she said, yes. And so we've been in talks, but that's also been She's also referred other people within the community to myself as well as somebody who is aware of the problems within the autoimmune community. And so I'm more cognizant. So I know like we talk a lot about neurodivergency and different things like that, that make travel specifically just a little bit more trickier, or it doesn't even have to be, you know, a medical, a medical type thing. Is there something that you have in common? I know somebody who recently joined a pickleball school to learn a little bit more about pickleballing, but also to rub shoulders with the pickleball people so that they can promote the river cruises that have the pickleball courts. So it can start with a Facebook group where it's specializing in like local entrepreneurs getting together or whatnot, or you can find these commonalities of Facebook groups. Don't automatically pitch, figure out what they're about first, and then start, you know, putting the little, putting the little idea in everybody's ears through these Facebook groups. Also niche events. It goes very in tandem with that. Are there any events that are happening virtually or locally to you that go with those certain niches that you are very, very well attuned of because you also belong to those types of groups. And then podcast platforms. So you'll see on my podcast, I have guests coming on and that's a way for them to gain visibility. I recently had Roz Rance from Travel Agent Achievers in Australia come on talking about just some of the success that she has had. And so again, looking at different commonalities, books, um, autoimmune neurodivergency, retirement, 
any of those things that really like describe who you are as a person, are there also podcasts that you listen to that you're very interested in that may not necessarily be about travel, but you might have some sort of unique angle that you can spin it as some sort of travel travel benefit to the people that are listening to that podcast listener. That's a really amazing way. And then podcasting is awesome too, because it's very casual. You can do it on your own time, depending on when the other person has timing available. And typically you don't have to like get all dressed up and fancy like you would at an in-person event either. All right. Collaborations. Again, you kind of see like how everything's stacking a little bit together. When we're talking about collaborations, those networking groups, the Facebook groups, niche events, local businesses. I know many people that will go into like local shops, local wineries, wine bars, and they'll just be a patron of theirs for a couple of months before saying like, Hey, have you ever thought of taking some of your top wine club people on a European river cruise or wherever it might be? I know somebody else who did that with a flower shop that there was like a garden center and they're like, huh, tool of time cruises. I think there's a, a really good marriage that can be sent set up by what you know the product is out there and the different businesses that you like to go to or visit and how can there be some sort of bridge that you connect that you are offering an opportunity for a fellow local business owner to increase their own visibility but also increase their kind of like sparkliness because it's not all the businesses that are offering different trips for their clientele. It is very unique businesses that want to offer these unique opportunities. So what kind of local businesses really want to stand out from the rest and that you have a certain affinity for? And then industry organizations and associations. And again, there's so many different things that are out there. There can be all the different crafters, planners. Planners are a huge group of people. The paper planning. I don't know if you're a paper planner. I had dabbled in that world a little bit. Podcasters are another big community. Um, I will say any cultural community is also a huge community. So what are those affiliations that you can find? And Because people like to travel with like people because they understand the different differences and also the tribulations. So there's that affinity, like I keep saying, that you can all relate to, but have fun away from being just here at home. Events. And so again, a lot of uh, um, repeats are coming up. So niche events. There locally is a lot of charity events. And that's what I would just mentioned to here too, is that if we're looking for a more affluent clientele, more affluent clientele really likes to give back to the local community. So what kinds of charity events are happening? And you can go to Google to go ahead and search that or also Eventbrite or Meetup to see what kinds of events are happening. Partnering with local businesses. Also, there are vendor groups who are saying like, hey, I have this vendor event. It's for this type of people. I'm still looking for people that you can also be a vendor at. So it's not only you attending these events, but it's also you being featured at these events. And then SEO, search engine optimization. And so I would say for the most part, this can be doing a lot of work up front so that later on you don't have to worry too much because you're going to start getting found on search engines. So that means having a blog on your website and a blog that has keywords written into it because the keywords are what Google and all the other search engines are really picking up from your website. Also, the words on your blog and on your website are what Google will pick up so that your Google business profile can be featured higher up when people are searching for your business or for a business like yours when they're doing a Google search. I started out with blog because then there's also Pinterest. So if we're talking about search engines in social media specifically, Pinterest and YouTube are the two tops with TikTok also gaining some interest from our younger generation, Gen Z. 
So, but when people are thinking about these platforms, Pinterest and YouTube, why do we go to those platforms? Because we're searching for a solution and you need a blog in order to be able to make pins on Pinterest so that they can um, kick back to your website. So I like to mention Pinterest a little bit because again, you put the pin out, the pin will work for you for years to come as long as you have th different things optimized. YouTube is the other one and you don't have to do full length videos or anything like that. It can be you recording yourself on a Zoom, giving some guidance, giving some travel updates, maybe even recording a short, which is a short 60 second video. And as long as you're adding keywords and tags and things in those videos, it helps to really increase your searchability on those platforms because YouTube again is another search platform. I recently had a washing machine fiasco and aside from Google, I went to YouTube to figure out how I could fix it myself so I didn't have to hire somebody. Last but not least, I think is the social media that nobody's really talking about because no one really thinks about Google business profile as being social media. And that Google business, having a Google business profile is essentially telling Google, this is what I want to be found for. I would be daring enough to say that Google business profile is more powerful than even your website because you're directly telling Google everything that you want it to be found for as long as you have your Google business profile optimized. I know many people also will get reviews for their pro business profile, which helps elevate your, your profile when somebody is searching locally. All right, let's head on over. Let's check time real quick. Okay, we're halfway. Uh, create and develop relationships. Social media. So this is once people have met you, known you, how are they going to stay in your atmosphere? And so this is the part of creating and developing relationships. Because some people, if they find you on Google, they immediately want to do business with you. We wish that all clients would be like that, but unfortunately not everyone is like that. They need to like, we need to be dating a, a little bit. And that's what these texts do is help you date each other to see, do we want to work with each other? Do they understand my needs? And do they have the connections that are needed for the trip that I want to be going on? And so that's our social media, that's our email marketing, that is conducting virtual lives and webinars, coffee chats, and active engagement because social media is not just about posting. All right, so let's dig into each one a little bit more with the different texts that are involved. So for social media, you can use different tech like Canva. Canva is a graphic design extraordinaire platform. There is a free version and then there's a paid version. You just get more options on the paid version. I stayed on Canva for as long as I could until it was like, okay, it's time to upgrade to the paid version. But you can create social media graphics. You can create flyers. You can create even websites on Canva now. Another thing to help you with creating social media graphics and objects or just social media media is Descript. Now, Descript helps to transcribe any text. So if I am filming a video, obviously there's text, but the text doesn't show up because that's not what most tech does. If you're recording any sort of video and you're putting it on social media, like a reel, a TikTok, a short, especially on LinkedIn, on all social media platforms, but especially on LinkedIn, it needs to have the captions on the video because one, accessibility, but also two, especially for LinkedIn, people are not necessarily listening to a video. They're more reading the transcriptions because they're multitasking, doing other things. So that's why I like to mention Descript because it is an awesome tool to give you captions. If you are also doing like Facebook lives or webinars, if you have that recording, upload that to Descript, get the transcription, but now you can pull off different things in the transcription to repurpose as like blog posts or to repurpose as different social media posts or social media graphics. It is a super neat way of being able to repurpose content just from the words that you say. And I like it for that reason, because it's not like we're using an AI and the AI is combing all of the internet. 
you're actually using your own intellectual property that you've already like put out somewhere, but you're repurposing in a different way. InShot and CapCut are different tools that you can use on your phone to uh, edit different social media videos. So if you're making those reels, those TikToks, those shorts, those are different things. I like to keep it simple and I like to edit in my Instagram app. But if you wanted a couple more features, those apps are going to be really great for you. I also tend to go with the native tools, like I just mentioned, but also the schedulers. I do have a caveat to say with this one though, that Meta Business Suite, so Meta Business Suite is a native scheduler for Facebook and Instagram. Have been having some issues with that, which makes me want to go more to a non-native scheduler. And a native scheduler means that it's just included within the app, but all of them include it. YouTube has one, Facebook, Instagram have Meta Business Suite, and LinkedIn just finally added a native scheduler. Then we have our non-native schedulers, and there's a lot of different ones. These are just a sampling buffer, Publer, Later, Metricool. Not only can these help you schedule your social media posts, but they can also give you data and analytics on those social media posts so that you can be working a little bit smarter, not harder. Uh, there are also some tools, some amazing people within the travel industry. This is just two of them, Travel Agent Collective and Wanderlust Social that make, they have like social media template memberships that you can purchase for a monthly fee into, and then just adjust the posts based on your branding and then based on what you want to be posting. So if you need a little bit of help that way, that's one, those are some of the resources that I would look towards. Uh, I do have to caution with some of the templated stuff. It is not automatically branded to you or your business. So you do have to do a little bit of extra work that way. You've probably also heard of branch up. A lot of the travel industry businesses are using branch up is not my fave, but I'm trying to be responsible and give you a lot of different options here because at the bare minimum, they will post up posts, but they are more supplier focused posts. They are not focused on you your, and your travel brand. And so that's why I caution it. Like if you want a bare minimum social media presence, then use something like a, a branch up to have something up there. But the better, like if we're saying good, branch up is good. Better is one of these travel agent collectives or wanderlust social. And best is really for you to be doing your post, but even better than better than that is really to be able to hire somebody else out that can make your own custom social media posts. So different, there's different ranges in here. There's also consortia su and supplier tools that are available to you. I know with Travel Leaders Network, there's different magazines, and I know Virtuoso also does certain, I think, social media posts. So again, they are more supplier-centric than they are your travel business, so that's my caution there, but at least it gets you something. Email marketing, and email marketing is specifically, what I'm discussing is specifically if you want to have an email newsletter, whether this is weekly, whether this is monthly. And so my two top favorites are MailerLite. MailerLite is a free option and it's really simple to use. I also love Flowdesk. Flowdesk is a paid option, but it is even easier to use than MailerLite. I would start out, if you're just starting out with email marketing, start out with MailerLite and then eventually graduate to Flowdesk because as your list grows, Flowdesk doesn't care how many people are on your list like some of the other ones like MailerLite, ConvertKit, Aweber, or Brevo. Brevo used to be Send and Bloom. Brevo also has way more features than just email marketing. It also does text marketing. And I was hearing a couple other things. So that's something to be tuned to also because with this email marketing platforms, it's not just that you're sending out weekly newsletters if you're doing a lot of digital marketing. So if you're doing your social media, your social media has to lead somewhere. It's not that you're posting on social media. You want your social media to lead to sales, but you don't own, you'll hear this a lot, you don't own the social media platform. So how can you get people on something a little bit more closer to you, which is email marketing? So if you have some sort of lead magnet, freebie, a giveaway, a calculator, a 
PDF, a guide, something like super juicy that people are like, I need to get my hands on that. You can have a landing page that's also built into these email marketing platforms to get people signing up for that, which means that they also get onto your email list and you can start sending them out uh, those email newsletters so that you can cultivate that relationship through that platform and and hopefully that they convert based on the information that you're giving them on that email platform i also have to tie in the email marketing membership i am a member of this membership it is only nine dollars a month it is through somebody named liz wilcox who is super amazing at email marketing these are email templates so if you're like okay email marketing is something i might want to try to do i don't even know what i'm supposed to write though even the email marketing membership really helps with that. If you get my Friday emails, those are done through the templates in Liz's membership. So um, at the end, I will have like a little resource. I do have affiliate links. Um, I don't support any, I don't have affiliate links to things that I don't like or things that I don't use. So just a disclaimer on that, but there is a link to the email marketing membership because if you want to test it out, it's a no brainer at $9 a month. Uh, then there's also the email article bundle. I do have a email article bundle. If you're a cruise specialist, I have 50 email articles that you can also use on your blog or as LinkedIn posts. And then your consortium supplier also does have tools for that. Virtual lives and webinars, kind of like, like this. Uh, you can do lives also on your different social media platforms like YouTube, Facebook. You can go live on Instagram and LinkedIn. Some of them are going to require this outside streaming platform, like a StreamYard or a Restream. But most of them do have native streaming where you can stream natively in the app. You can also use something like this as a Zoom. You can do Google Meet or you can do a go-to webinar. You can also utilize Canva to create your slides like this. This is a Canva slide deck for your presentation. Uh, if you would like to, instead of using Zoom, Google Meet, or GoToWebinar as your registering page, you can do, do that through Calendly or Acuity. Um, you can also create all of your slides within Google Slides or Google Docs. You can also promote your lives or webinars through Eventbrite. So especially if you're working with a BDM for a live or a webinar, of course, you're probably going to be uh, inviting all of your social media audience. But what if you could get more local people or just more people nationwide through Eventbrite that may not have ever found you unless you had added this registration link on the Eventbrite page? And then huh, I love coffee chats. This is, if you don't know what a coffee chat is, there is a pod, there is a podcast about it, but it is like, I've met somebody or somebody has reached out to me on LinkedIn or whatever social media platform. And I'm like, Hey, you are interesting. Or I want to know more about your business, or I want to know more about what you do. Let's have a chat. And so if this is local, this can be an actual in-person coffee chat, but if it's virtual, you can set up a coffee chat with your calendar scheduler. And that chat can happen on a Zoom or Google Meet, or you can just set it up with a virtual, any virtual calendar that you have or as a phone call. But those are some of the tools that you can utilize to set up your coffee chats. Uh, last but not least is active engagement. It is not enough for you to just post on social media or any social channel. You have to interact with people. And this is not just on your posts. This is also on other people's posts, which also gets you in front of other people's platforms. So bonus visibility opportunity there. But when I say engagement, commenting, sharing, sharing not only the post, but also sharing your thoughts and opinions on the post. I have a lot of like really great examples of that on my LinkedIn. If you wanted to connect with me on LinkedIn and you can just look at some of my past posts and, and what I've done and engagement there, but you are cultivating a relationship through digital channels. It's pretty much you are trying to cultivate a friendship with other people who may be within your network. Cultivating that friendship can eventually cultivate down to a business relationship. 
I added a timer app as one of the tech because you do want to dedicate some time out if you're not currently doing this. So if you want to do like 15 minutes at the top of your day and 15 minutes at the end of the day, just put on a timer app and have that timer going for however long so that you can make sure that you're actually dedicating time to this. Because if you're dedicating a lot of time to some of the other posts, this is equally, if not more important to do in my opinion. Then on social media, you'll notice that there's been a little bit of a change that we used to use the term link in bio, link in bio, link in bio everywhere. And now it's not, it's seeming like some of the social medias don't like when you use link in bio. So what a lot of us are changing to is saying comment Buffalo, if you would like to know more about seeing the buffaloes in the Midwest. And when someone comments with the word Buffalo on your post or whatever word it is that you've chosen, they can, you can start a conversation in the direct messages because that's what you've indicated. So you're starting engagement that way, but also it helps increase the engagement on that social media post, which means the algorithm will share it with more people. So it's kind of a dual purpose. If you have a smaller social media audience, you can do this yourself. If there's only like a handful of people that are commenting to know more information, you should be able to handle this yourself. If you have a bigger audience or you are just really cranking out business, which amazing, we want that to be happening. You can use a tool like many chat that will kind of be like your chat bot. So whenever somebody comments Buffalo, you can already have an automation set up in many chat that when someone comments Buffalo, send them to this link. It's either a blog post or to a consultation call, whatever it may be. And then last but not least, you can also utilize your social media schedulers. All right. So we've done meet, we've done connect. Now we're at the convert part. Let me know if you have any questions about Meet and Connect, and we'll go ahead and start on converting. So you've met the person, people, you have cultivated a relationship that they are ready to learn more intimately about what you do, slash they have a travel idea in their mind, and they're like, I think I want you to book this for me. I think I want to work with you on this. So that's where discovery calls come in place sales pages, joint venture presentations, and client itineraries. You'll notice that the difference between a coffee chat and a discovery call, a coffee chat is strictly just to get to know you, see how you can collaborate, see if the person has any needs. It's not a sales type call. A discovery call is more of that sales call. They know what you do, they know what they like, and we're trying to figure out if all of the factors are going to align that they will work with you. Uh, we also have having sales pages, JV presentations, client itineraries that you can utilize in this conversion method. So to convert clients through discovery calls, handy dandy acuity or Calendly are available to us so that you can schedule those calls out. You can do these calls through Zoom or a Google Meet, something like that, or you can do them just good old good old phone still works uh, you can also utilize if you don't have a calendly just set things up and send a calendar invitation like a google invitation so at least it blocks out the time on both of your calendars and then we have all the different crms that are available that can help you with discovery calls mm Hmm that can help you with discovery calls in the sense, I was like, where was I going with this part? That you can have a form on your CRMs that they can fill out for more information. And with that information, you're able to have an effective discovery call because you've kind of pre-screened them. And so I believe all these, maybe not, Sion may not be the right fit for this one. Sion, Sion and We Travel might not be right fits for, but Travel Joy is a CRM. Um, Vacation CRM is a CRM. Planet Easy Revolution Travel CRM. Those are all CRMs, but they also have itinerary builders. But also Travify does have a form builder within its itinerary builder. And then Tess is another CRM itinerary builder extraordinaire. So that's why I included it in the discovery call. You're going to see all of these platforms kind of in the rest of this because we're utilizing these platforms to convert our clients. 
our sales page. That's where a lot of these will come into play because you can create sales pages. Like you can create a full website on Travify. You can also create sales pages with booking details like proposals or things like that in all of these other CRM platforms. So if you are currently on one and you don't really like the solution or the solution's really bugging you, you can see that travel tech has really exploded the past five, I would say even more the past three years. So there are options available to you that you can create a sales page when I think of travel joy, I specifically think of a group sales page. We were able to enter all of the group information and then also add like, this is the, these are the different resort options, or these are the different cabin options. And people can go ahead and click on those and submit their information, submit any forms. They can submit their deposits and all that. And it's simple. It's easy. It's an easy way to convert people. You can also have different pages on your website as a sales page. So if you're promoting a group trip or a solo trip, or even just wanting to highlight a different destination, you can do it by either having a solo site on or page on your website or embedding something from one of these platforms on your website. You can also go as simple as creating PDFs on Canva or just having a Google Doc with information of what you're trying to plan for your client. And then if we're doing if we're talking sales pages, we also need to talk about how we are getting paid. And so that's why I included like Sion is a payment can be a payment processor. So can Trip Suite, We Travel, Travify Now, Travel Joy, all of these can accept payments. If you are not ready for a full CRM though, you can utilize something like a Square, Stripe, PayPal, or Wave apps and couple that with a DocuSign, JotForm, or Adobe so that people are not only paying you, but you've also got their signature for your different forms like a client service agreement. Joint venture presentation. So if you are doing some sort of collaboration with a local business, this is where you're going to, you're going to have a sales talk. You're going to have a sales presentation to this business's clients. And so this is how you would prepare. It's very similar to having that webinar, but then you also have to think like on top of making the presentation, maybe making any sort of PDFs with forms, how am I going to collect their information? Are you going to have a QR code that goes to a sales page link, or are you going to have your laptop open and collecting payment on one of these payment platforms? And then also being able to email them or having them sign in person, any of the forms, those are the critical components that need to happen. They need the information, they need to agree to your terms, and then they need to pay you. And then your client itineraries are also a way where you can convert people. And so lots of these, that's why I took a couple of the texts out from here, but you can create an itinerary in all of these different CRMs or itinerary builders and send that to your client either for approval or to be like, hey, am I am I on the right track? You can also do that through Canva. And through Canva, it can also be, maybe it's not you're doing the full itinerary just yet, but you're giving them examples. Maybe you have a stock file, a stockpile of different itineraries for FIT in Italy, FIT in France, FIT in Spain, whatever it may be. And instead of doing a personal itinerary to start with, you can say, hey, here's a sample itinerary that I have, and you can send it through a Canva or a Google. If you are also going through somebody's itinerary, like you've, you're, you've said, okay, here it is here for you. You want to up the ante and do a, some sort of video walkthrough. So something called screen pal, which used to be called screen cast matic where you can screen record. You can also screen record on Loom. I know that's a popular one. Canva also has a screen, uh, a screen sharing feature too. So if you wanted to like kill two birds with one stone and not get on any more tech, you can just utilize Canva for a bunch of different things. And then of course your payment platforms and your form signing areas. And then last but not least, we need to maintain the relationships because you worked already so hard to formulate and gotten to that period. 
we need to be able to celebrate our people, but still being able to connect with them on similar platforms. So you can do celebration cards or gifts. This can be thank you cards and gifts as well. Periodic mailers, just updating them on what may be going on. And this is like in per like real direct mailers. You can also do check-in calls just to check in and see how they're doing. So this one's going to be, this slide is a little bit more condensed because there's going to be a lot that we kind of covered in the second phase that you can copy. So as far as celebration cards and gifts, my go-to really is something that I've used for, I think, two-ish years now, which is mailbox power. You can automate birthday cards. You can automate holiday cards. Send out cards is very similar to that. You can also send gift cards or you can send different gifts out to your clients like luggage tags or personal, personalizable water bottles or things like that. Greetable is also another gifting service that's available. And then for here too, I would also like to mention if there's any local businesses because aka potential partnerships, collaborations, if there's local businesses that specialize in giftables. Maybe that's somebody that you want to go to and be able to, to swap services at some point. I did also want to note there is a fellow travel advisor. Her, her name is April Allison. She creates custom boxes. So if you like to hand deliver or mail deliver documents or cute little treats and things like that, she can design these boxes for you in your own branding. If you'd like her information or like to be connected, uh, just shoot me a message. I think her business name is called Blank Page Method, but I don't know if she's active on her business page, but I know she's active on her personal page. Um, but if you're interested in finding out more, I can make a connection that way. Uh, social media and email marketing is also a really great way to maintain those relationships, especially if we're talking about sending different the different direct messages and things like that. Uh, periodic mailers. So I like to do something called a cruise of the month postcard. And I do that through mailbox power. There's automation set up so that it automatically sends and I don't have to worry about sending any postcards. And you can, I'm not sure if it'll work the same in send out cards, but if you are, if you are like golf trips, I want to send out like a monthly golf trips. It really gets people knowing who you are, knowing what your brand is, but then also it's like a, Hey, I'm still in business. I'm still in business and it gives ideas for different trips that people can take based on what your niche is. There are also plenty of consortia and supplier tools that are period that are can serve as periodic mailers and then the handy dandy check-in call. Whew. All righty. We went through a lot of information and I know we're heading up time. So if you need to leave, just let me know. Um, but let me see how I can whiz through. Go ahead, take screenshots of these because there are a couple of honorable mentions. See, I told you I like to talk. <laughs> and so honorable mentions, we're talking about all these different processes and how to make processes easier. And you can set those up in your CRM. But there's also the travel tech like Sequence. There is Trello, ClickUp, Asana, and Monday that are also project management tools. If you are looking to hire out somebody because you do not have the time to look into any of these types of technology, there are Teak, Teak and Travel Biz Boss, and Travel Advisor Solutions all have templates. But I'm not sure if you can hire Teak to put in, but I know Travel Biz Boss and Travel Advisor Solutions, as well as a couple other travel VAs can help with that. And with that, I mean, putting the different task lists into your CRMs so you don't have to worry about doing so. You can also hire out virtual support. So some of these do offer virtual support, but then I offer virtual support for marketing. And then I know Carla Fritz and Melissa er Erskine offer support with Travify itineraries. There's a bunch others that are out there. So if you need any support, um, there is also virtual assistance or travel professionals Facebook group that you can connect on there. Masters in Travel does have a library of different destination insights. 
So if you need help with different destinations around the world from actual travel pros, they can assist you with their library. And then Travel Pro Theory also has different templates and things. That's with Kate. She used to have a podcast, but now she just sends out emails bi-monthly with lots of templates and guides and things like that. There is also AI, the future, the future of AI coming out. That's chat GPT. Toby is an industry specific AI. And then a new one that I've been testing out is cast magic. And I love cast magic. Cast magic was specifically made for podcasters. But if you have a live show or are conducting webinars, you can, it's similar to Descript that it will transcribe. But on top of that, it will also give you keywords so that you can add it to your keyword research. It will give you timestamps. It will give you ideas for social media posts. It will give you blog post ideas. It will take out different clips that you can use for social media. And what I love about that is that it just makes your content creation process faster. But on top of that, it is your, using your intellectual property, not somebody else's intellectual property to get this information out there. And last but not least, uh, podcasting. I'm a huge fan of podcasting. You can host your podcast through Buzzsprout Libsyn or Anchor, and you can record and edit through things like Audacity, GarageBand, and Anchor. And then communication. How are you seeing communicated with clients or even team members? And that's through Slack, which is kind of like an instant messenger app. And Voxer is a nice walkie-talkie app that I like to use on my phone as well. All right. Before questions, I did want to get to, and let me go ahead. Let's go to the chat. Yay. Okay. Yes, I know. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm running a little bit late. Okay. So local networking groups, chamber of commerce is a really great one. Awesome. April's boxes are amazing. Yay. Oh, good. Thank you, Cindy. Okay. Appointment, appointment. Awesome. Okay, Cindy. Thank you. All right. But before questions, I did want to invite you to a special workshop that I'm hosting at the end of this month that does have to do with marketing and tech. And it's really to help get you found on Google. And while I cannot say that I can guarantee you results, at least we're going to help get your Google business profile optimized. And that's the get found on Google workshop. I know brilliant, brilliant name. It is a two hour, two part workshop where I'm going to teach you about different things that you can use to optimize your Google business profile to get found by people who are searching, actively searching. Because when we're using search platforms and things like YouTube and Pinterest, those I feel are more warm leads than somebody on a social media platform that are cold leads. These people are actively searching for your business on Google. And so how can we make sure that Google pops up your business more often? And that is by optimizing your profile. So we're, I'm going to teach you some backend things about Google business profile, what you can do, but then we're actually going to take time to build out your Google business profile. So it's going to be a little bit of learning, some tutorials, and then you're going to get to action. We're going to get it done. And there's also, I will be there. So if there's uh, any questions that you have, or if you need assistance or guidance, you can, of course, ask me while we're here on the two hours. Now you need to have your Google business profile already verified, meaning that you have received the postcard from Google, because if you don't have that done, we can't actively work on your Google business profile. And so that is why this webinar, this workshop is taking place on June 28th, because it's going to give you more than enough time if you haven't done that process to get that process done, because it can take one to two weeks for Google to send you that postcard. And so here's the, here's the hard deets. It's Wednesday, June 28th from 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern. It will be recorded, but it is going to be much more beneficial for you to be live on this Google workshop so that you can take advantage of me being there as well. Just for the workshop, the two hours, all the tutorials having me there, it's $40. Once you have completed and you're like, actually, I need somebody's eyeballs on this to tell me I did a good job or not. You can either do the standard registration, which is 40, or you can do a VIP registration, which does include a profile audit 
from myself. And then, yes, it will be recorded. All right. And then here's just some lovely words that some of my friends and colleagues have said about me. We don't have to stay here on too long, but let me, there are some uh, notes that I have to get for you. Let me, let's go ahead, look up some notes so I can give you all the links to all the thingies. All right. Let me add this in the chat. All right. So whew, thank you first and foremost, again, for being here. I hope that this webinar was super helpful and not too overwhelming to be like, oh my gosh, like that was a lot of tech that can help our marketing efforts in our travel businesses. Um, feel free. This is question time, question and answer time. I will stay for an extra 10 minutes. If everybody, anybody has questions, um, feel free to come off mute, put questions in the little chat box also. Um, if you have any questions on how like the tech works together, or if you need not necessarily troubleshooting, but maybe like you have a pain point and marketing pain point, and I can see like what kind of tech I can point you to. Um, but that really is it. If you would like to stay connected and I hope you do, here's a couple of my contact information, um, myself, my email, the podcast, and then of course, stay connected with me, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, because LinkedIn is one of my faves. If you would like to come off mute, you're more than welcome to do so as well. Let me see. Did anything pop up? No, is everybody good then? So Rita, I missed your lovely little voice. Hi, Tammy. <laughs> Hi, long time no see. I know what's going on. A lot. Good job. Thank you. Did a great you. job on this. Thank you, Tammy. Awesome. Thank you so much, Carrie. There is no registration deadline. You can register up until we're going to go live on June 28th. And you have your special stuff here. I'll add it in the link. I'll add it in the chat again. <gasps> From Argentina. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Stephanie. Wow. We're international here today. Alrighty, any other like major marketing, not marketing pain points, but anywhere that we can connect tech? Ah, oh, thank you so, thank you everybody, I appreciate that. And let's go ahead, stop the share. Alrighty, well, if you don't have any questions or comments or anything for me, yeah, there's there's tons of stuff and. I had even thought, Danielle, to add something on, thank you, Terry, something on, oh, now I can't even remember. If you don't, if you are not aware, autoimmune disease, what I have gives you a lot of brain fog. So like ideas can poof, just like poof away immediately. <laughs> But there were a lot of things that I had thought about adding, but I knew I had a feeling we were going to run a little bit late today. All righty. Well, that is it from me. I will go ahead. If you need to have any other information on the workshop, or I will also have this recording up. So if you needed to like hear this all over again, let me know if having a transcript would also be beneficial. And I can use some of my tech to create a transcript for you. But I have really appreciated your time here today. Uh, please stay connected with me, listen to the podcast, stay connected with me on all the different channels, and I will see you at the next one. There is another tech summit, not tech summit. There's another audio summit coming in a few months, um, but I'll keep that. I'll keep that to me for now. But again, thank you. Have an amazing day and I'll see you soon. Bye.